I don't think it's going to be a huge uh, uh, video that we're going to want to see, so it's better, better to have that there. So, yes. Five? Uh, uh, is that the answer? Yeah. <laughs> he wants to buy Oh, he wants to do this right here. Oh, we might not even get this. We, we, I, we get so much stuff to do tonight, we're not, we might not even get here, but we'll, we'll see. But let us. Let us. This is the number of T's. Oh, it is. I know it is. I know it is. Let's start uh, with a word of prayer. And we'll get going. And I probably thank you for this time. Uh, we just ask for a time when we can just um, enjoy the time together, but learn. And learn in a way that um, we can pass on in our lessons. Um, help us train others to know you better. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I want to make sure I got all the names, right? Steve, Dan, Laura, Jenny, Lee. All right. Are you guys ready? Because I'm going to have you going tonight. You ready? You should be here. Okay. So first I'm going to start a story. Start a story. Uh, I grew up in Wheaton. I went to a little church, Bethany Chapel. And it was a brethren church. You know, I think about Plymouth Brethren. And if you don't know somebody about it. We did not have any pastor, right? I mean, you, it's priesthood of all believers, and they expect you, if you go to that church, you're going you're gonna to work. There is no pay staff. There is no pastor. It is, our congregation has to do stuff. So, went to that church, and I uh, was a young college graduate, and married, and of course, got strong arms. Yuki has to teach Sunday school. Oh, okay, I can do that. I can do that. And how many of you guys have taught Sunday school before? Like, kids Sunday school? Okay, maybe, okay. So how, this is how it was back in the day. They, they gave you a, uh, a teacher's guide, and the kids got their own little books. I don't know, David C. Cook, I'm not sure it was his publisher. And how do you think I prepared for my lesson? What do you think I did? I read the leader's guide. And if I was very ambitious, I would underline certain things. Okay, okay. Sunday morning, I would come up to class, and I'd sit down with the kids, and I'd open my leader guide from here and turn over to your guides, and I'd say, okay, let's tell the story of David. I didn't realize at the time it was horrible. It was horrible. But I didn't really know it. I was like, okay, I'm just doing my thing and doing my thing. So then uh, I did that for a little while, and then I was asked by the college age group. They were going to do a retreat to Lake Geneva. Retreat to Lake Geneva. Will you come up and do devotions for us? I don't know why you're asking me, but sure, I can do that. So I did my lesson. <clears throat> I put about as much time into it as I did for my little kids, you know. What am I going to read? And I get there, and I did my first devotion, and it was okay, horrible. Have you guys ever done a horrible lesson? I don't know if you have or not. Horrible. And I thought how horrible it was, and this is the truth, and I hate to admit it, confess to it. I, it was in a big house on Lake Geneva, and I needed to find places to get away, because I was so, so embarrassed. And I went into the furnace room. It was the only empty room I could find. I just started crying. I just wept. Horrible. You know, I started praying, God, you gotta make this better. This is this is terrible. Well, Lord Swinton was not so bad. Okay. Anyway, I move on. A horrible teacher. Horrible teacher. And I um, I get promoted. I get promoted at my church. You know? Uh, from a, a, a salary of zero to a salary of zero, but more responsibilities. I am now Sunday school superintendent. Which I'm thinking is a good deal. Why? I'm going to teach. Right? What do I have to do? I just have to find teachers. Right? So I find the teachers for all the class and thinking, this is pretty good. This is pretty good. I'm some school some kind of teachers. But I'm feeling a little guilty because I realized how bad I was as a teacher. I'm thinking, we really need to do something for the teachers that help them get a little bit better. Right? So at the time, I don't know if it's still around, years ago, they used to have a Chicagoland Sunday School Teachers Convention. Do you guys ever remember that? Don't they have anyone? They did at the time. So I said, who wants to sign up on a Saturday for the day to go downtown for the Chicago, Chicagoland Sunday School Teachers Convention? How many people do you think signed up? How many, how many think, Lee? Probably you. I got me. I got two others. Two others to go with me. Uh, we, fit, we all fit in our car. We drove down there, and I got there, and I walked in, and what do you think my feeling was that day? Walking into that convention. How do I, what do you think I felt? Excited. It was the exact opposite. <laughs> I got in there, and I started thinking, what am I doing here on a Saturday? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. What have I done myself into? 
full day on this. I can't believe it. I have kids at home, my wife's home, I'm busy all week. Ugh. So I wasn't all that excited. But I said, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to soldier on. I'm going to soldier on. And then a list of seminars you go to, and I saw one I thought was interesting, creative teaching methods. Oh, I think I'll do it that way. So I walked in, <clears throat> and I sat down, and it was a big room. There's more than this. <laughs> Maybe besides on this room, maybe. And the guy started, and we're going to do exactly what he did in that lesson, probably 20, 25 years ago. Okay? So he said, um, first of all, no paper and pens. No paper and pens. Okay? We're just going to play a game. Just play a game. I want to know how smart you are. Okay? So, Steve, you ready for the game? Now, some of you, some of you guys may already, some of you might may already know this. And if you know this game already, don't give it away. Some of you probably don't. But if you know it, don't, don't, just keep back, put it down. Do you have no idea? Okay, so, I want you, are you good at, like, memorizing things? Here's, here's what you gotta do. Ready? Recipes. Yeah, recipes. Good. Okay, here's what I want you to do. One. Just say one. One. And one. run. 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 One run. You got that? One run. One run. You got that. Dan. Two. And zoo. Got it. Two and zoo. One run. Two zoo. One run. Two zoo. Can you do both of them? One run, two zoo. Could you do it? One round, two zero. Okay, Laura, ready? Three, tree. Three, tree. Three, tree. Three, tree. Dan? Two, zero. Two, zero. Three, tree. One round. Okay, Jenny? Four, door. Four, door. Four, door. Four, door. Okay, backwards. Four, door. Three, tree. Two, zero. One round. Okay, got it? <laughs> Look, ready? Mm -hmm. Five, hive. Five, five. Five, five. Got it? What was this? One, one. You remember dance? Two, zoo. Three, three. Four, four. Door. Four, door. Four, door. Four, door. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't even know. I didn't even put it on. All right. Okay, so we got five now. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Ready? Let's keep going around this way. Six. This is the toughest one. Six is sick. Six is sick. Yeah. Six is six. That doesn't rhyme very well, but six is sick. Got that? Six is sick. What was, what was one? One run. What was six? Six is sick. One, one was run, six is six. Yeah. Two was? Zoo. Yeah, so you're yeah. Yeah. Two is three is? Three. Four, four is? Five is? Five. Okay. Okay. Six is sick. Six is six. Can you do all six? Six is sick. Six is sick. What did I say? Six, six is sick. Six. <laughs> Whatever, you got it. Can you do all, can you do all six? Can you do all six? Uh, I hope so. Try it. One, uh -huh. two, two zero. Uh -huh. three, 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 uh -huh. four, four, uh -huh. five, five, five. Uh -huh. six. Seven. Beautiful. Let's keep going. Seven. Okay. This is the one easiest one of the whole thing. Because look where you are. Seven heaven. heaven. Seven heaven. Yeah. Seven heaven. So you get two, two zero. and seven. seven heaven. <laughs> Ready? Eight is gate. Eight is gate. Got it? Eight gate. Eight gate. Eight gate. Eight gate. Two. Seven. Oh, seven heaven. <laughs> I, I threw you off. I threw you off. There you go. Seven. Seven. Two, 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 three, three, uh, four, door, five, five, okay, good ones, uh, one, uh, run, one run, okay, okay, what do we get up to, we got seven, we got eight, 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 eight was what, eight, 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 eight. okay, okay, nine, vine, nine, vine, nine, vine. Nine. okay, got nine, vine, nine, nine. Uh, now we're just going to start, well, let's do one more, ten is ten, 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 so you had two, what do you have, you had five, yeah, Five, five, and ten, ten. Ten, ten. You had? Four, door. And nine, nine, nine. nine. Yeah. Three, three. Yeah. Eight, eight. Yep. Two, zero. Uh -huh. Seven, seven. Uh -huh. One, run, and six, is six. Okay, okay, now, now. But you guys, you've listened. You've got a couple, you know all ten, right? If, if this is all together, I'll just do, put some numbers out, you tell me the word. Okay? Two. 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 Five. 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 One. Run. Three. 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 Eight. 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 Nine. Five. Nine. 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 Ten. 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 All right. Six. Run. A six. Six. What's six? Six. Six. You're right. Six. Who can do all ten? Who can do all ten? Steve can. <laughs> okay. Let's go. See. 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 The challenge is the gauntlet is laid down. Lay down the gauntlet. All right. All right. All right. All right. One. Uh -huh. Two. Two. Uh -huh. Three. Three. Four. Four. Uh -huh. Five. 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 Nine. Six. Six. Seven. Eight. Uh -huh. Eight, eight, nine, nine, ten, ten. Wow. Woo! Jenny, are you ready? Oh. Come on. I'll help you. I got two more. I'll help. I'll, 
Uh, uh, Lori, I'm Lori Lord, 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 Okay. Yeah. Dan, can you do it? Sure. I want you to backwards. Great. Backwards. That's what I want. I know. That's exactly what you want. Exactly what you want. So, 10. All right. 10. <laughs> <laughs> 10. Very good. Okay. 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 We're going to do a word, a picture. I'm going to give you a visual picture associated with that. So I'll give you an example. One was run. 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 Here's the visual picture I want you to think of. <clears throat> okay? You are looking at the ocean beach. There's a beach and there's the ocean. You can see the sun and the horizon. Can you picture it? The waves lapping up on the beach. And you look and all of a sudden you see this horse. It's galloping towards you down the beach. The waves lapping at its foot. Yeah, but you can believe you can see it. Mm -hmm. It's in your mind. Ocean, beach, waves, horse. Okay. What's that? What does it sound like? Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get. It. You'll see. You'll see. And it's coming. It's coming along, horses. But as it comes up closer, you notice there is something riding. I mean, there's not something on the horse's back, and it's not a normal rider. It's not a normal person. And as it gets closer, you see it's got like this gigantic Buddha eye on its back, like a Buddha sitting on its back. You got that? So if I say one. One, one is what? Run. Run. And what's the picture? See, what's the picture? What do you see? What do you see? Tell me. With our one run or? One run. What's the picture that I just described? What is it? Okay, it's the horse on the beach with Buddha on its back. It is. That's exactly what it is. You got that? Everybody got that? So if I say one, you say run. And what do you picture? Horse on the beach, Buddha on its back. Exactly. Ready? Ready for two? Yeah. All right. So two is zoo. zoo. So you're at Let's make it be you know, like Lincoln, Lincoln Park or Brookfield. They like. Brookfield. Let's go Brookfield. Let's go Brookfield. So you're Brookfield Zoo, and in Brookfield Zoo, you have the old ape house. It has the cages on the outside and the ones inside, depending on the weather, right? And you're at Brookfield Zoo with your kids, and you're walking along, and you see the monkey cage, and you see the monkeys in the cage. They're all, whoo, and they're swinging around and everything, and they're like, ah, they're, they're up and about. This is good, you know. So you walk up to the cage, and they see you, right? They see you. And they come swinging over towards the cage, and you notice that in their hands, they've got like gravestones, like from a cemetery. They've only got these gravestones, and they're throwing it through the bars at you. Like, you know, like dodging, dodging these gravestones. You got it, Lord? You got it? So what's three? Three trees. Yes, what's four? Four doors. Yeah, five is? Five. Ten is? Ten. Oh, and if I say one run, what do you picture? Horse on the beach with a boot on. And if I say two zoo, what are you picturing? Monkey throwing gravestones. Yes, they are throwing gravestones at you. Have you got it? <laughs> okay. So six is six. two is zoo. ten is yeah. okay. We're on three. We're on three. So here's the picture. Ready? Three is what is three? Tree. Tree. And I want you to picture you're outside. It's like Daily Plaza. And they have the gigantic Christmas tree. Jenny's giving me this look like this is a crazy thing. <laughs> There's this gigantic Christmas tree, gigantic Christmas tree, and you look at the Christmas tree and it's all got all the horns, but as you look at the top, you're expecting to see what? A star, but there's no star. It's a weather vane. Like you see at a barn, like a weather vane. Swing it up, it's like a electric star. Lee, you got that? What's on top of that tree? Weather vane. A weather vane's on top of that tree. So, Lee, if I said one, what's Ron going Run. And what do you see? Or scalloping on the beach with the boot on the And if I say two, the rhyming word is zoo. And what do you see at the zoo? Uh, apes throwing gray markers. Yes, you do. And if I say three, you say tree. And what's on top of the tree? Weather vane. Weather vane. You guys got it? <coughs> Should we keep going? Sure. All right. All right, you guys are fantastic. You got it all. I think we got Okay. So we just said three, let's do four. Four door. Four door. So you're still not down Chicago. You decide, I've seen the tree, I'm gonna head down to Michigan Avenue, or maybe it's State Street, I can't remember, it's been a long time, to go to Marshall Fields. Marshall Fields still there? I haven't been downtown so long. The sign's still there. Okay, well, it used to be there a long time when I was there. If you go to Marshall Fields, 
and you're going to go inside this door, and it's a revolving door, one of those nice revolving doors in the Marshall Fields. And so you're walking along, and you're going to go into the revolving door, and you start pushing, and it gets stuck. Why is the door stuck? And you look to see why it's stuck, and you look in one of those compartment things there, and there is a huge, like, iron bathtub, the ones with the claw feet and stuff. And in the bathtub, there was like, it's like a foamy bath, bubble bath. And there's an old guy in there, in the bubble bath, and he's crying. Maybe he's crying because he's stuck in the bathtub, I don't know. But because he's in the bathtub, he's stuck in the door, he's keeping the door open. You got it? Yep. Okay. So if I say five, we say? Five. If I say seven, we say? Five. If I say one, we say? Five. If I say two, we say? Two. If I say eight, we say? Eight. Okay. And if I now want to do pictures of those things, if I say one, run, what do we see? Yes, if I say two, zoo, what do we see? If I say three, tree, what do we see? If I say four, door, what do we see? Oh, man, in the bathtub crying. Great. Go up to five, which is what? Five. Five, five, five. Okay, five, five. So, here's the picture. And, and this is interesting because a few years ago, I was out, I live in a cul de sac. And I walked outside and I saw a swarm of bees. Have you really ever seen a swarm of bees? It's unbelievable. First of my life, tens of thousands of bees, and they, they, they're like in a cloud, and they were swirling around like this. Has anybody seen this? Have you ever seen this? Mm -hmm. You have seen it. Okay, I, first time I ever saw it. And they actually landed in a tree by my neighbors, and it, it formed like this huge like ball just hanging there. Okay? Anyway, it has nothing to do with lessons, so I feel sorry. <laughs> the lesson is, though, you are now looking outside and you see a gigantic beehive. It's huge. Okay, it's a huge beehive. It's, it's the size of this, like, this wall. It's huge. And you say, I got to get a beehive. And you walk up and there's these gigantic bees and they're zoomer, zzzz, all on the beehive. And all of a sudden, you know, bees can all of a sudden start going for you. Right? You ever had that happen? A bee go for you? Yeah, Danny had that, right? You know, especially when they spray that wasp stuff on them, they get mad. They come flying at you. And these two bees come zipping out at you, Dan, and you're kind of paralyzed. And you look, but these are no normal bees. They are not normal bees. When you look, they've got faces. And it's your mom and dad's faces. That's what you see. The bee coming out with your mom and dad's faces. You got it? Yes. Okay. All right. So, one is run. run. Two is zoo. Three is Three. Four is Three. Five is Five. Six is Six. Six. Seven is? Seven. Eight is? Eight. Nine is? Five. Five. Ten is? Ten. Woo. All right, so you got all that. And we've gotten to five, we're on six. We're on six. I was recently at the doctor, so I know how this is. You guys probably have been to the doctor, and it's like, you're waiting, and the doctor, you need to get a shot. You need to get a shot. So the nurse comes in. And she comes in, and she goes, B, I gotta give you a shot. Can you picture it? You're sitting on the table, waiting, yeah. <laughs> and she comes in and she goes, I gotta give it a shot, and she pulls out this gigantic syringe. I mean, this is not a little thing, it's like, like a bazooka syringe, okay? And you know how they tap the bottom of the syringe, the plunger, get the air out, and the water, you know, pops out? She pops the band of that plunger, and instead of air, a little water popping out, all of a sudden you see this, like, knife stick out, like this. Like, oh my gosh. Got it? That's the picture. Doctor's office, giant syringe, knife. <laughs> Have you got it? Yep. Have you got it? Lee, got it? I'm not going to doctor's office. Perfect. Now let's do pictures. Let's do, let's do. So that's good. So if I did two zoo, what do you picture? If I say four door, what do you see? Many bad <laughs> Yes, you do. If I say six, sick, what do you see? Giant syringe. Exactly. Okay, so now. Now it's seven is heaven. seven, 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 seven. Okay, so seven heaven. Um, you are out in the field. Anybody a farmer? The farmer's okay. So you're out in the field, <laughs> and it's just a big grassy wheat field. And you look and you see a ladder stretching up into heaven. Like wow! And then you look closer and you see there's something climbing that ladder, and it is a tree. You ever see like Lord of the Rings? You're like, okay. <laughs> this is just kind of like a boring, it's just a boring looking tree. It's just a normal boring looking tree climbing this ladder, going up to heaven. Okay, you got it? So if I say seven, primary word is heaven, right? And what do you see? Tree. Ladder going to heaven with a tree, tree climbing on it. Got it? Okay. okay. Who can do all seven words, rhymes, and pictures? We've only got three more to do. Who can do all seven? 
Jenny, you can do it. Ready? One run, uh -huh. four from the beach, two down from the back. Woohoo! Yes. Two, two, monkey throwing race jump. Yes. Three, tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree with me. Yes, it is. Four, door, man, back to crying. Yes. Yes. Five, five, knees in the faces of Dan Spears. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. Seven, heaven, ladder, tree, growing to heaven. Wonderful. Give her a hand. Very impressive. Very impressive. Very impressive. Anybody else do it? Anybody else do it? All seven so far? Dan, you feel confident. Just do it, man. Let's do it. I don't know your parents. One, <laughs> one run with a, a horse running on the beach with the water, flat the ground's feet with the boot on his back. Yeah. Two <laughs> zoo. I'm uh, taking my kids to the Brookfield Zoo. Yes. Monkeys are throwing. So yes, 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 yes. Three tree, the giant tree with the weather vane on the top. Yes, no. the four door, there's the crying man and his old man in the bathtub, which is preventing me from going yes, yes. to the Marshall Fields. Yes, yes. Uh, five high, the giant wall size beehive by Jimmy Cathy. Coming <laughs> Jimmy Cathy, <laughs> Jimmy Cathy, <laughs> coming up. Jimmy Cathy. Six sick at the doctor's office. Uh, giant syringe, yes. a needle, uh, a yes. knife that's coming out of the Yes, yes, yes. Steve's not going back. Uh, <laughs> seven heaven in the field, the wheat field, there's a ladder going up to heaven with a tree uh, climbing. Yeah, boring tree. It's boring yeah. tree. Yeah. Yeah. boring tree. You'll see. You'll see. Let's do eight. Let's do eight. Eight is what? Gate. Oh. Gate. Gate. <laughs> so every time I drive to work, do you drive to work? Who drives to work? Mm -hmm. Watch it. Do you ever cross roll tracks when you drive to work? Okay. You're driving to work, and you come to the road tracks, you start to see the lights blink, 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 and the gate starts going down, coming down. But this gate is different, because hanging from the gate are these gigantic steel bars, okay? So the gate comes down, steel bars hanging blocking your way. They want to make sure you're not crossing that track. So you got the steel bars hanging from the gate. You got it? Okay. Nine is fine. Nine, nine is fine. So, you are walking around your house, your springtime, you want to check on your clematis, whatever the vine you plant is that you have. You walk by and your clematis is not a normal clematis anymore. It's like something out of, I don't know what, it's gi gigantic. It's, there's vines crawling all over the side of your house. And as you look at it, you notice the blossoms are not these nice, pretty clematis pink flowers. They're like, like Halloween masks. Like something's just crazy. Like maybe like like Greek play or something. You got these Halloween masks. You got it? Yeah. Okay. I think you guys are good. So I'm gonna go one more. You got ten is yeah. ten. Ten is ten, right? Okay. So here's the picture. You uh, drive home from work into your driveway, and you're driving your 2002 Ford Escape with 200,000 miles on it, like me. And I pull into the driveway, and sitting in the driveway. Is a brand new Maserati. Oh. And I take it back. Take it back. And it's, 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 it's 10 hen. It's, it's, the, it's a giant hen. Okay, it's a giant hen that lays a giant egg that opens up into a brand new Maserati. You got it? Okay. 10 is hen, yeah. lays a giant egg, you open it up, Maserati. You got it? Yep. Okay. Let's just start with what's what, what color? It's red, of course. Red Maserati. Okay, so you got that red Maserati. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna start with easy, the 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 you know numbers and the right numbers. So if I say one, we say right. If I say five, we say five. If I say seven, we say five. If I say six, we say six. If I say ten, we say ten. If I say two, we say two. Three, we say three. Okay, so we got now. I'm going to say a number, you've got to say the rhyming word and the picture. Okay? So, Dan, yep. four is door. Uh -huh. It's the revolving door with the old man in the bathtub crying. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. And Lee, if I say one, you're going to say run, horse galloping around the beach with the blue on his back. That's right. And Laura, if I say ten, you say ten. And what does it do? It leaves a giant egg that has a red Maserati. A red Maserati. Oh. And if I say nine, Jenny, Nine, you see what? Nine. Uh-huh. Masks with huge faces scary humming. Masks on. Huh? Exactly. And if I say eight, see what do we see? Eight. Let's uh -huh. see the rubber of the gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
one. That's right. Can someone do all ten? All ten. Number, word, and picture. I think y'all can do it, but who wants to volunteer? Dan? Sure. You're the man. One run, four scooter back. Uh -huh. Two zoo, monkey star grave zones, three tree, weather bay on the top, uh -huh. four door, man in the back of the crying, uh -huh. five high, Jimmy Cathy trying to sing me, seven knees, yep. six sick, needle with a knife, seven heaven, ladder with a boring tree, yep. Yep. Uh, seven eight, gate with the railroad crossing, the yep. bars, yep. nine vine, vine growing, uh, Halloween. Yes, yes. Um, ten hen, the hen is laying the egg, egg that has a red monster. Red monster. Right. Can someone else do it? One other person. It's got Lori. I'll do it. All right. One run that's the horse on the beach with the Buddha on his back. Yes. Two zoo that's the Brookfield Zoo with the monkeys running race. Yes, yes. Three tree that's Christmas tree with the weather on the top. Mm -hmm. Four door that's the revolving door with the man crying in the back. Up. Yes. Five pie that's a giant. Beehive uh -huh. with two bees flying at me that are dance parents. Yes, yes. Six, six. Yes. <laughs> the doctor's office with the nurse with the giant syringe with the knife coming out. Of yes. It. Seven heaven. Mm -hmm. That is the ladder in the field with the tree, boring tree climbing up it. Yep. Ladder. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Seven heaven. Ladders up heaven. Tree. Boring tree. Yep. 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 Eight day. That's the railroad <clears throat> the gate coming out the steel bars. Uh -huh. Nine vine. That's the giant chromatic line with Halloween masks. Yes, yes, yes. Ten hen, that's the giant hen laying the giant egg of the red monster <clears throat> on the inside. Yes, right. Eagle perceptor on my body. Fantastic, you guys are great. Okay, I got a question for you. Okay, so Dan, what's the fifth commandment? What's the fifth commandment of the Ten Commandments? What's the fifth one? Hmm. Let me help you. Five is what? Hive. And what do you see? Yes, you do, because you see your parents' faces. That's what you do. That's exactly what you see. Lee, what's the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments? Do you know what it is? Can I help you? Can I help you? Four is, what is four? Four is door. What do you see? What do you see in that door? What was that guy doing in the bathtub? What was he doing? He saw a man in the bathtub, right? Four, door, man in the bathtub. He was, he was sad. He was taking a sad bath. Sad bat, remember? Sabbath. <laughs> he was taking the sad bat. Sabbath. So the fourth is remember the Sabbath. How about this one? How about this one? What do you think the seventh commandment is for you? Let's go seven. What do you think seven is? Seventh heaven, what do you see? It's the wheat field, the light right now. A boring tree, but it's not really a boring tree. I kind of just like it. It's a dull tree. It's a dull tree. It's a dull tree. Yeah, so don't get an adultery. Okay, that's the seven heavens. It's not a boring tree, it's an adultery. Okay? Do we think we could do all the Ten Commandments? Wow. Can we do all ten of them? What's one run? What do we see? The Buddha. There's no other gods before me. What's two? Two zoo is what? Monkeys from the graves. Growing gravestones. Don't worship any graven images. Three. Tree. What do we see on top of that tree? What vein? What vein? Don't take God's, God's name in vain. Four door, we already said, remember the Sabbath. Five high on your parents. Six, six, there's a knife coming out. What do you think that was? Don't commit what? Murder. Don't commit murder. Seventh heaven, adultery. Don't commit adultery. Eight, gate, what's coming down? And what's hanging out in that thing? Steel. No, what? Steel. Don't steal. Don't steal. Steel bars, steal. Nine, mine. What do you see? All those fake masks. <coughs> no false witness. Fake mask, no false witness. Ten, hen, lays an old leg with the Maserati. What are you not supposed to do? Cut it. Cut it. You're not supposed to cut it. So now, you know all ten commandments, and you know them in order. So if someone asks you, what's the seventh commandment, what are you going to say? Don't commit adultery. What are you someone says, what's the eighth commandment, what are you going to say? You're going to say, eight, gate, don't steal. <laughs> exactly. If I say, what's the fourth commandment, you're going to say, four, door. Oh, remember the Sabbath. He learned Ten Commandments. I'll tell you something. I did that lesson 25 years ago. I taught it all over the place. I taught it in the junior high class, adult classes. I will tell you, people love that lesson because they love learning Ten Commandments. A couple, couple other things. I was a business seminar, and there was probably 500 people in the seminar. And the guy was giving a seminar talking about how you think you know stuff, but you really don't. 
I guess an example was, like, how many of you could list the Ten Commandments? I was the only one who could. The only one. Not only could I list them, I could list them in order. Right? Hey, which one do you want? I'll give you the seven. I'll give you the six. What do you mean? What do you mean? So it just it, it is a great thing. I taught my kids. My my daughter came home from college not too long ago. She said, Dad, I just taught my uh, new boyfriend the uh, Ten Commandments. Good. I'm glad you did. So a great way to learn and remember. Right? You guys like it? Had anybody done it before? No. All right. All right. So now you know. And you will remember. I guarantee you'll remember. So we're going to talk about creative lessons. Creative lessons. And we're going to continue to talk about creative lessons. Was that creative? What makes it good? What makes that a good lesson? Besides being creative. I'm going home. My wife's going to ask me what we learned tonight. <laughs> I'm going to start reeling this off. Exactly. And she's going to call Brian. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. But you will remember them. And you will remember them, right? And if, and if you want to do a lesson on Ten Commandments and you can talk about those Ten Commandments, you can say, you know, the Catholic Church, well, they list our commandments different than us, right? Their, theirs are going to be a little bit different. You can tell what those differences how we look at that passage, stuff like that. All right. So it's creative, it's fun. We learn and remember. All right. So let's do this. Next thing I want to do is I want to do a little game, and I hope everybody's got their Bible. No, I didn't. You didn't bring your Bible? <laughs> All right, that's okay. I got you covered. I got you covered right here. Okay, I'm gonna actually we're gonna divide up. Stand up, everybody, stand up. Let's get in order by uh, let's get in order by height. By height, let's get in order. This is all part of learning. It's called movement when you're in class and height. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do, okay, Steve and Laura over here, you three here, two different teams, you ready? That team at that table, that team at this table, all right? Can you do these right here? Oh, we get to draw. You get to write. <laughs> and, and Steve, you can use my Bible, okay? Because I'm a nice guy. Does your have the answers on it? Of course it does. All the, all the answers are in there. All the answers are in there. Okay. You guys ever do sword drills? You guys ever do sword drills? In missionettes. Sure. Okay, hold your Bibles up. How do you do a sword drill? Hold your Bibles up by the back of it. Steve, hold your Bible up. You're cheating already. You're cheating already. We're talking over here. Okay. So, for one million points. So, whenever I do a game, I don't just do one for one point or two points. I do for a million points. For one million points, the first person who can find this passage, okay, and raise your hand when they got it. We'll see which team is better. Oh. For how many points? A million. We'll make it ten million. Ten million. Ooh, wow. I want you to find Luke chapter seven. Wait! <laughs> Luke chapter seven, verses thirty-six to forty-seven. Go, 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 go. Luke chapter seven, verse thirty-six. As soon as you find it, let me know. Done. Look up! Winner! 10 million points! Well, let's get everybody else. Everybody else keep finding, keep finding it. Luke 7, yeah. verse 36. I did too. I did too. All right. <laughs> okay, Luke 7, 36 to 47. Whenever he's got it, I want you to read the out loud for Laura the, the story. Okay? When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, so she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. 
You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. All right, good. So here is Jesus, I think, teaching a lesson. Right? I think he's teaching a lesson here. But he's not just blah, 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 blah. He's doing things. Here's what I want you to do at your tables. Okay? Look through the passages and identify two or three, I came up with, I think, three creative things that Jesus did to teach his lesson. And what did he do to answer the question and to kind of make that creative lesson? Okay, so read through it together, and then I want you on your pages to write down two or three things that you see that Jesus did in terms of this passage. Okay? Got it? You get, you get three minutes. Three minutes! We gotta go. There's not much time. No, I, I, I cram a lot of my lessons. You gotta go. <laughs> Don't let him hear your answers. Don't let him hear your answers. Okay. What did Jesus do? Yeah. What did he do to make it you know, heighten nerve? Grab attention. I can't do. A teaching method. A teaching method. What teaching method did he use? That's, that's good. Dan got it. A teaching method. What teaching method did he use? That's what we're looking for. Good, good, good. Okay, time's up. Time's up. Time's up. Good, good, good. Hold on. We've got to keep the core space. So let's let's talk about let's talk about what you guys saw. So let's start with this table. What, what is one thing that he did as a teaching method? He tells a parable. He tells, okay, so I'm gonna put story in there. Okay? I'm gonna put story in there. Alright? He tells a story. Give me another one that he does. Do you have a story? We have story. You can cross it off. It's like scatterboard. You just cross that off. <laughs> God, you both got a story. That's right. Tell us a story. Stories are great. Stories are fantastic. People love stories. Okay, what else? <laughs> what else we got? He talked about what, what they were doing right then. I mean, what was in front of them, like what they saw and felt. I'm gonna I'm gonna yes, and I'm gonna say he used visuals. Okay. Okay, can I say that? Yeah, visuals. I think I had that in my thing here. Visuals? Here we said see. We said see. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say visuals. I gotta be, you know what? I work for an Indian company, okay? And one of the things that's been happening to me, this is I, I go on tangents when I teach too. One of the guys I work for, his name is Vishal. So when I spell visual, a lot of times it's Betty <laughs> Vishal. So I'm just gonna put Vishal's name on here. But you'll know that's visual, okay? Okay, so you, 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 do, you do Vishal's and you do stories. What else did he do? Ask questions. He asked questions. He asked questions. He asked questions. <laughs> Okay. Beautiful. I like what we're doing here. I like what we're doing here. We're, we're actually making a bingo game. Okay? We're going to make a bingo game. So when you do your lessons in the future, you can do your bingo game in terms of how many of these things do I have in my lesson? All right? So I'm creative. Okay. Did he do anything else? Anything else he did? Questions, stories, visuals. You actually had everything that I had. I thought I'd do one more thing. He applied it. So he said, look what's happening in this situation right here. 
So we had an application with it as well. Questions, stories, visuals, application. Okay, so now, here's the next thing I want you to do. If you got the letter or email from Jenny, she said, bring your Bibles, Steve. <laughs> Bibles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else are you supposed to do? Who can tell me what else I'm supposed to do? Have the two to three creative things. Two to three creative things, things that you've seen other people do or that you've done. So now at your tables, take two minutes and list out two or three or four other creative things you can do when you teach. List them out. We're gonna try to fill this, we're gonna try to fill in this board. Fill in this board. Okay. <laughs> Well, those are the three that I have to Nice. So, so, so uh, Dan, what is the seventh commandment? Seventh heaven. Adultery. Adultery. And Laura, what's the second commandment? Two zoo. No, no graven images. I just say that because maybe that's a hint for a creative idea you might want to put down in this paper. Well, when you call that, I don't know, but put that down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can put that down. Anyway, listen, you, you run out of time. I want two or three more things on there. Two or three more things. Hidden treasure. Three. 
Three was hidden treasures. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You remember that. You know, you know, you know, I won't do this, okay, but I can do, okay. Can you guess? Can you guess the concentration gain? Look how engaged you guys are. Danny got it. Oh, Dan's got to wait. They get to guess because they got the uncovered clue. You got five, four, no, three, four, two. But with uh, point. What's your what's that? The end is R but with a point. You're close. Are you close, Dan? Parables. <laughs> Pair parables are tails with a point! Yes, they are. That's the type of parables are. And what do we have? We had parables, you had the hint? Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
Let's talk about questions. Like we could we could spend a, a night on each one of these things and how you can use them in the lesson. But honestly, we're just going to do a few things. Questions. What makes good questions? Lee, you teach a class. What makes a good question? Open ended. Open ended. Because you're trying to get what? Discussion. Discussion. Okay. What else makes a good question? Excellent. What else makes a good question? Something that calls for uh, experience. <clears throat> So, uh, just asking somebody to recall an experience. Okay. So talk. talk about an experience you had. And I can even go to someone specifically and say, you know, Steve, give me an experience in this. You can talk to me and get someone to say, yes or no, we talk about it. Okay? Anything else? I, oh, those are good. Two things I like with questions I like tension, right? I like tension, like a rubber band, because it builds tension. You know, tension helps with two things. And I like um, the questions could be leading to where I want it to go, right? Sometimes people ask questions just to get questions, but it doesn't help you lead to the point you're trying to get to the lesson, right? So let's do some good questions. So let's say, I'm not sure I want to go down this road. Let's do it this way. Is it wrong to lie? Wrong to lie? Always wrong to lie? Steve, is it always wrong to lie? That's always wrong. Always wrong. Always wrong? Did you tell your kids about Santa Claus? <laughs> I did. You did? Was that a lie? No, I told them there wasn't Santa Claus. You said, but did you say there wasn't Santa Claus? No, I never told them. Oh, you never did? No, I just wouldn't believe it. You just wouldn't believe it? Okay. Okay, what, what about if you were over in um, you know, the Middle East and you're hearing that 21 Christians got beheaded? And you've got a chance to hide them, and they go hide in your house, and ISIS comes knocking at your door, and they say, Do you have Christians in there? What are you going to say? No, I love. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to go on a list online, but you want to ask questions that make people think a little bit. Because it's easy to come up and say, Money's wrong. Yeah, we're done. Lesson's done. But if I can say, What are you going to do when a person's you know, in your house, and they're going to get killed unless you tell a lie? Still wrong, right? My answer is yes. It's still wrong, right? Now, although we let this class get to that point, right? Now, I, I even say uh, we're getting way up on the line lesson now. I even say, yeah, it's wrong, but I'm still going to do it because I want to attract those people, right? Now, that's a whole different lesson. But anyway, ask questions, of foster dialogue. Questions, okay? So we're not going to go through any more of these because uh, we can talk about a lot of these things. We won't. We're going to go to our next lesson. How long do I have, Jenny? Until what time? 30. Okay, perfect. All right, you should have another sheet of paper at your table. Do you not? No, no you don't. No, you don't. I got it over here. Just turn it over. Okay, turn it over. Turn it over. Turn it over. Okay, I got it. Good? Okay. All right, you guys are great. Here's what we're going to do it's easy to do creative lessons. The danger of doing creative lessons is that you just make them creative and there's no point. What you have to do is you have to have a point that you want to make, and then make it creative, right? What's the point I'm trying to make, and then how to make it creative? So we're going to work on a lesson, okay? We're going to work on a lesson. This table, this table, we're going to do a lesson. And we're going to do a lesson the way I do my lessons, and we're going to see if we can make them good and creative. So here's what I want you to do. Turn to James chapter 3. Thank you. James chapter 3. And I want you, I want you to look at the first 12 verses of James chapter 3. And what I want you to do, yeah, I'm going to give you seven minutes, maybe five minutes, five or seven minutes. I want you to list, first thing I want you to do is take a piece of paper and list as many observations about that, uh, that passage as you can. Just Which observations. Which passage? 3, 1 through 12. Chapter 3, 1 through 12. Can, can we use 13? <laughs> <laughs> no. 3, 1 through 12. And just as a team, just list out, you might want to have multiple markers you can write together, because you can just make lots of observations. Alright? You ready? Go! <laughs> Go! Observations. Just any observations? Good. Good. Marker. Good marker. Good teachers. Good. 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 Good.
parts of one. I'm gonna stop you there. I'm gonna stop you there. Okay, let's do a categories game here. Let's see how we're doing. Table one? Table one, let's start with something you got. What do you have? What's an observation? Few people speak teachers. Got that over there? We do. Check it off. Check, check. Check. What else you got? What else you got? Everybody stumbles. You got it? Good observation. Very good. What's next? You got it. You got it. You got it. All right. Next. Tongue is small and fire. Tongue is small, but it's like a roaring fire. Roaring bear. So I'll just tell you a story. When I taught this lesson one time, here's how I taught the lesson. I had a table in here. I was going to do this tonight, but I just didn't have time. And I relayed a story that actually happened. We were in here for like some type of appreciation dinner. Nice dinner. I was sitting at a table right back there. I have been here, worked there. And they had, table, they had candles at the table. Nice little candle, nice little flame, right? And I'm demonstrating this while I'm telling the story. They got a nice little candle. And they, I said, pass the rolls. And they passed the rolls over. I put it down right by that little flame. Put my basket right by that flame. Guess what happened? It caught on fire at the, at the dinner. <laughs> Flaming basket. <laughs> so then, what do we do? Pour water on Yes. A big pitcher of water, and I did this while I'm teaching, telling the story. I dumped water on top of it. <sighs> Made a mess, right? So the lesson being, little flame, nice, heat, light, pretty, caused a huge mess because I let it get out of control, right? So you can tell stories with visuals like that. Anyway, little tangents. I one tangent the whole time. Sorry. What else we got? Time corrupts the whole person. Corrupts the whole person. Corrupts the whole person. Yes. Okay, they got it. I believe them. <laughs> it's a restless evil. Tom's restless evil. It's a deadly poison. Powerful, restless, deadly poison. Corrupt soul person. What else? Evil cannot produce good. Evil cannot produce good. You got that? No. no. Give yourself a point. Give yourself a million. Give yourself a million points. All right. All right. What else you got? Oh, rest is evil? Rest is evil. Yes, yes. What else we got? Um, judge. Teachers will, uh, will be judged. Teachers will be judged. Um, yes, they got it. Talking about that uh, in terms of the, the horse or the rudder, that the small things can be controlled. Small thing can control something very big. Mm -hmm. Small thing, horse, yeah, the rudder, and the horse is a bit. Got it, got it, yep. Tongue cannot be tamed. Tongue cannot be tamed. Got that. Yes. Um, words uh, can uh, both bless and curse. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Bless and curse. Okay. And there's like fresh water, salt water. The, 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 one thing to get in, what else do you guys have? Okay, well, okay. No, just real quick. Uh, no fault in talk equals perfect. Okay. Uh, Taking your tongue from your body. Yes. Uh, and has tamed all sorts of animals, but not the tongue. Can't tame it. Uh, with the tongue, we praise God. We curse men who are made in God's image. Fresh and salt water don't come from the same spring. Right. Big tree can't produce olives. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of some, some of the comments from your heart. Your heart's good, you're going to get fresh water. If your heart's bad, you're going to get salt water or big and olives. Can't two go, 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 go good together. Okay, got it? Next exercise. Five minutes. Five minutes. Three minutes, maybe. Now, I want you to look at those observations and come up with two or three principles that if you were going to teach, you say, here are two or three principles that I want to teach. If I'm looking at those observations, looking at that passage, what are some principles? 
that you would want to teach. Ready? So think about it. Talk about it amongst your group. Talk about it. What are some principles you want to teach? You can be at the zoo. Yeah. You like the zoo. We were big we were big zoo fans because we had four kids, so zoo was always a good thing. My my oldest my oldest daughter is in Sacramento. She's got three kids. So the zoo was a big fan for her too. <laughs>
All right, are we ready? Can you come up with something? I know it's not like, putting a lesson together takes hours and hours and hours, and I'm forcing you to do something in 15 minutes, so I apologize. But it's just a general idea. You just changed my whole lesson from last week, so. <laughs> all right, so it, it takes a long, long time to come up with a lesson, as you all know. We've got so. something brilliant over here. Okay, what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> But well, we were talking, yeah, I think oh, okay. so. We were talking about the idea of you'll be known by your fruit. Yes. And so um, we were talking about um, how you would, your conversation would change based on who you were with. So let's say you um, were struggling with a family member or some issue. If you were going out for drinks with guys from the office after work, how would that conversation look versus conversation you might have on, at team on Friday morning? So, you know, the same issue, life issue, but different contexts. Yeah. Are you representing yourself the same in those different places, or is it changing, and how is that a reflection of the role of your tongue? So, so your, your, your application is, you go up, you go ahead and think about, reflect on, how you work, how you act, how you speak in other contexts of your life. Mm -hmm. And is that, do you want to be consistent with that or not? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. What else? You got something over here? Um, talk about uh, ways and try to think of like specific ways that um, uh, you could in increase the amount of time that you spend praising with your tongue as opposed to cursing. Excellent. Excellent. So you want to focus on praising. So that means it's a mindset. What are some things that can change your mindset? How do you, how do you change your mind? What do you, how do you change your mindset? You said you want to change on praise. What helps you praise? Now, one of the things we just tossed out right at the end was that uh, we need a God that we do. That, uh, <laughs> can turn us around. Absolutely. Something something like that. You know, I, I heard you talk in praise, and what I thought in my mind was Philippians 4 8, in terms of what you think about. There's true, there's noble, there's right, there's pure, right? I want to fill my mind with praise. I want to. I want to fill my mind with this. Right? Yeah, anything of excellence, worthy of praise. Set your minds on these things, right? Those are the things that I set my mind on. How do I apply that? Maybe I memorize that verse. Right? I say, hey, just take this one this week. Come back next week and memorize that verse. That's going to help. Okay? I say, so we've done observations, we've done principles, we've done applications, right? The observations of the passage, the principles, and we come up with some applications for it. The last, the last part of the exercise. We're down to the last final three minutes. You've got the bingo board. The bingo board of things that you can do to make creative lessons. You know what you want to do. You know what you want to talk about. You've got observations. You've got principles. You've got things you want to apply. You're going to teach your lesson. When you teach your lesson, what creative thing can you do that might make this a good lesson? Instead of just going in and saying, here are my observations. Here's my principles. Here's the application. See it. What creative thing can you do? So think about that for three minutes, and then we'll see what you chose. And quite honestly, you cannot fail. This is just a trick, pick one. Oh, we're going to do a story. We're going to do, we're going to do a little song, whatever it is. Just think about that for three minutes and see what you come up with. Right? Go.
You rock it? Yeah. You rock it? I'm excited. I'm excited. So what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? What do you guys got? We decided we're going to write a poem. Poem. Love it. Love it. Sorry there. All right. Beautiful. What do you guys got? You want to go for it? Yeah, we thought of a game that Yes, little yeah. games. And the game is based on the uh, uh, kind of based on Family Feud. That's what it is. Family Feud's a great one. And um, so what we're going to do is emphasize how you kind of you know what um, you know by your fruit kind of thing. So what you take in is going to come out. Mm -hmm. So we divide the class in half. One of them we prep them with like memories of sitcoms on TV or something. And the other one we prep on various parables. And we bring them back in on two different sides and we ask one question. But they're answering, they, they're answering different some different perspectives. I like it. I like it. Very I don't good. know how we're going to get all that together. No, it's, a, it's, 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 it's all the brainstorming. But it's, it's like <laughs> showing that you're, if you're involved in one thing, this is what you're thinking about, this is your mindset, it's going to come out. Yeah, perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Excellent. All right. So let me just run through a couple of these things. So uh, a story. Oh, I just did a lesson on words not too long ago. So and I did it. Mine was in a World Wide Web world because now we've got the Internet and our words are even more powerful, right? So I, like I stored one story that I told was the fact that uh, you know, there's now 1.2 billion Facebook accounts. And I don't know how many, over a billion like Twitter accounts. And there's a PR guy at... Uh, who represented one of the big car makers, and he, made a, he tweeted something out about nobody in Detroit knows how to drive. And not only did he lose his job, because he represented me, the business lost the account, right? So he said something, small thing, <laughs> tweeted out, boom. So you can, you can do a story. You can say, I got a visual aid. I got a visual aid. I got a shoe here. You know what my shoe has? What does a shoe have? A tongue. It's got a tongue. It's got, got a, a tongue. It's got a soul. It's got a soul. It's got eyes, right? She's got eyes, it's got a tongue, it's got a soul. I mean, I can do a visual aid and say, hey, listen, you want on this lesson, if you want a reminder this week, look at your shoe. What are you looking at? You know? What are you saying? Where's your soul at? Right? Look at your shoe. There's a visual aid. Uh, uh, questions. I mean, you can do all kinds of questions, like we did one online. Why is this wrong online? Why is it wrong online? You can do any type of chat on that. Uh, let's see, games. You could do concentration game. Just to get started. What is this one? Do you know it? Watch Have you solved the puzzle? Watch your tongue. Watch, watch your tongue. Words, Words can be harmful. Okay. Words can be harmful. Uh, I'm not good at that. <laughs> I like sleep. bees. I got some other ones over here. I got, I got another one here. I, I, I can't remember what this one was even, so I'll figure that one out later. Um, yeah, a poem or a song. Lyrics are terrific. I'm trying to think. I think I had something for everything on words on here, but I can't remember. Worksheets at your table. Get people to do things at a table. Um, getting people to get them around and, and do different things. Uh, last one is just maybe just write letters, write notes of encouragement. You know, hey, we're going to focus on uh, this week. There's someone who probably needs an encouraging word, right? Let's sit and do some letters this week. Just a quick note, whatever. So, just some ideas that you can use to think about how I take my observations, my principles, and application, and then try to put it against a creative framework so people can apply it for the week. So why don't we close in prayer? <laughs> so, that's it. That's it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for having um, hopefully a good time tonight. A lot of fun learning about teaching, but with the ultimate goal of teaching about you and bringing you glory. We thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Any, any questions? I, I went long. I apologize. But any questions or thoughts or comments or criticisms?